a marketing ploy. Literally, people have figured out how to make money off of translating and printing scriptures. One of the things that you'll realize is that about every year there's a new English translation that's been produced. And you ask the question, if we've had a good English translation for oh, about 400 years or so, what's the need in coming out with a new one every year? Well, I'll tell you what the motivation behind it is. It isn't that the Bible's getting better. It's because that the translation is getting better. It's because there's money in it. And, uh, you know, tragically, the church has allowed secular publishers to take over God's perfect word and be the ones who handle and give us the word of God. Now, I don't know about you, but having people who aren't born again, who don't love God, handling the scripture, that is a little bit of a problem to me. But there's a secondary problem with that uh, philosophy and with modern Bible translation, and that is that there are more than 4,000 languages in the world that do not have a Bible in their language. And there's not really money in printing in those languages. But there are people who don't have something that you and I just think is very common. The ability to take a book and open it and have God speak to you. Can you imagine, can you imagine what it would be like to not be able to read God's Word? Could you, could you imagine that? I cannot. I'll be honest with you. I can think about it, but, I, but I've never been in that scenario and I can't fully relate and so Brother Bill Fennell is part of a uh, ministry that has the correct philosophy of... Oh, what's going on with my extra sound there? Uh, but he, they have a correct philosophy of uh, Bible translation, and they are working on translating uh, the Bible into languages. Some languages uh, don't have a written... Uh, don't have written language, don't have written grammar. Anyway, that's what they're doing. They'll be with us this evening. Brother Bill will. And he'll be actually preaching for us tonight in our 6 p.m. service. And uh, I want you to come and uh, be informed about something. Also, we are going to tonight and perhaps uh, in the next couple of weeks have a special offering for that particular ministry. Uh, sometimes in our church we want to just support a ministry. Maybe we can't take them on full time, but we want to be involved with a particular ministry. And so tonight or uh, we'll have a special offering for the Worldview Ministries specifically uh, for supporting Brother Bill Fennell to be part of that ministry. So I want to let you know about that. And then this Saturday, uh, our teen activity isn't just a teen activity. It's actually an all-church game night. So it's not a singles activity, a teen activity, a family activity. It's an all-church activity. So you say, Pastor, is that a game night for me? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> and so it'll be a, maybe, uh, maybe this Saturday you had some... Uh, thoughts about, man, what am I going to do with my family? What are we going to do to spend time together and uh, enjoy our Saturday evening? And, and everything you're thinking about has to do with this. Not this Saturday. This Saturday, the entertainment is free. And uh, it's a game night. When we get together, folks, it's a good time. And we're going to have, it's going to be an ice cream, uh, just an ice cream night. So that's we're not going to have a big menu or anything like that. But we're going to have ice cream and, and the fixings. And so Saturday night, 5.30, we're going to plan for that to be about from 5.30 until 7.30. And there's a certain point when I'll leave, okay? And uh, But if you want to just, you know, hang out and be here Sunday morning when Sunday school starts up, just be awake. Don't sleep in Sunday school, okay? But that's the plan, so yeah, be planning. If you uh, are here and you don't have your family, it would be a great opportunity for you to introduce your family to church people. I don't know about you, but religion is a put-off for me. And mostly church is a, I'm just not comfortable with the, the church speak, the way that, you know, the, the, the language, the formality. You ever realize that sometimes uh, churches or religions, they, they have words and terms. I think sometimes they're just made up and just people just don't seem relatable or real. Well, you invite your family to come to game night and they'll get to meet some church folks. And then when you invite them, they'll just know, hey, that's just a family of people uh, that are a local fellowship and they've got something special and they'll want to come. So you come, you bring your family and friends, and we would be delighted to have you this uh, this this uh, Saturday evening. And then one more future event that I would like to mention, also by way of announcement this morning, is the men's retreat. Men, well, you may want to make a note that the time was 2.13 when we were supposed to leave with JetBlue, but it's moved up to 2.05. And so that's, I mean, it moved to 8.05. It was 8.05. <laughs> That, uh, that that flight is leaving, 8.05 a.m., Charlie. Uh, for everyone else, it's 2.05.
Uh, but, uh, okay, I'll tell you a story. A couple of years ago, we were trying to get back, all of us, and I mean I had all my all my church workers were on men's retreat. It was Brother Lee, remember this is Brother Lee, Brother Chris, Charlie, Alex, myself, Al, and we were in separate vans. Their van was ahead of us, but they took a quicker route or something like that. Or maybe they stopped, I don't know. Anyway, we were coming back, we were flying out of Atlanta. And anytime you're going through Atlanta, it doesn't matter if it's on Saturday, you're just taking a chance and not making it to the airport. And so we were barely making it to the airport. They should have turned in their rental van ahead of us, the other van, but they didn't. And we we're just barely making it to the airplane. And I think it was Brother Chris, and it wasn't Chris with, was with your group. So it was Brother Chris and I made it onto the airplane. And the other guys were, you know, if you've flown Atlanta, there's the Skyway trolley or whatever they call the train that goes between the terminals. They're zipping along in the terminal and the train stopped. You're elevated, you're out in the middle of the, you know, in, in between the terminals at Atlanta Airport and the train stopped. And they said, they called me, they said, I don't think we're going to make it, our train stopped. <laughs> so Brother Chris and I held up the plane. <laughs> 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 uh, the, they were getting ready to close the door. And, and we just, it took us forever to get in the door. We just, the two of us couldn't get in the door. And then we couldn't figure out what seat we were in. Uh, <laughs> and we just kept taking people's seats, and people kept making us get up, and we'd go to the next seat. And, and we switched each other's tickets, and then we looked, and I'm like, this isn't my ticket. This isn't my name. I told the flight attendant, this isn't my name. I had Brother Chris's ticket for his seat. I'm like, this is not my name. And so, so he's like, where's Chris Callahan? Is this Chris Callahan in here? We, anyway, we held up the train, and they made it on time, and we flew home. So anyway, so men, we'll do our best to get you back so you won't miss church on Sunday. And we're not flying through Atlanta. We're going through Nashville. But men, if you have not gotten your tickets to go on men's retreat, uh, I did notice last week JetBlue had flights for $69. Oh. And so check into that, and it may, as long as the times are similar to what we have, 69 each way, not 69 round trip. Uh, but the flights are still available on JetBlue as well. You do not have to confirm with me that you're going to go on that trip. Just get your flight. And so the time for leaving is, is uh, 2.05 on the Thursday flight, and then coming back, I think it's 4 something. 4-ish. Four uh, yeah, 4 something. So. Uh, just just uh, get on that flight and go with us. I think there's about 10 or 11 men that are planning on going on the trip so far. It's going to be a great time of uh, fellowship and preaching and activity. And you need to go. I'm talking about you. If you are uh, a man, you need to go on this trip. You'll have a, uh, it'll, be a good, it'll be good for you. And you'll have a great time as well. There's also a target challenge. You can win a 22 rifle if you can outshoot everybody else there. And so it's easy. I did it. First year they did it. Yes, sir. What? How do you get that back home? The 22 rifle? Yeah. Should have been nice. Uh, you can take it on the plane. <laughs> in your check-in luggage. You have to lock it in the case. I'm trying to remember how I brought mine home. I think we were on the bus that year. So, but if not, I'll leave it with somebody and get it for you later. So it'll, it'll work out. So if you want to come along with the rifle, you just go right ahead. We'll, we'll figure out the logistics. Of how to get home. <laughs> all right, that's all for announcements this morning. If you're visiting with us here this morning for the first time, can I say to you that we are thrilled to death. We're absolutely delighted that you're here. And I mean that. I'll just tell you, the more folks are here, the more individuals are here, it's like, it's like my day starts off good because it's the Lord's Day, and then I see somebody and the day gets a little better, and I see someone else, the day gets a little better, and pretty soon it's just like I'm through the ceiling as far as my day. And and you've made my day by being here. And if you're a visitor, I'm telling you, that's just absolutely the best. We pray that God would send us visitors in our church. And when you came, you're an answer to prayer. And so you really are a token of God's love to us this morning. And that's how we see you as our visitor here this morning. I hope you feel that way. And I hope you realize not only how much Jesus loves you, but how much you're loved and appreciated for coming here this morning. We ask that our visitors would fill out the guest portion of the bulletin and tear it off. And when the offering plate comes by, if you would just slip that in the offering plate, that would be your part in our offering. We don't ask our visitors to give financially. If you want to worship the Lord through giving, you're free and invited to do so, but not at all pressured or obligated. So we hope you understand 
the sense in which uh, the offering is when it comes by you. If you'll slip your uh, visitor card in the offering, we'd greatly appreciate it. And I'll ask if our men could come at this time to take up our offerings this morning. And as they come, I want to ask Brother Charlie if you would please pray and ask the Lord's blessing for it this morning as well. Thank you.